All right, we continue to monitor and track, of course, winter storm Cooper already producing uh, upwards of six and a half inches of snow. Melissa, was that it from from Durham? Nick and Durham reporting that Roger and Weathersfield at four and a half inches. So uh, the totals are increasing and they will continue to do so as we move forward in time. Uh, we've got our early warning pinpoint Doppler in a special mode here. This is a heavy snow mode that enables us to see where, of course, the heaviest snow is and also the rate at which it's falling. So a little bit closer inspection here, say in around New Haven, in West Haven, we see that deeper shade of, of red or purple. We're looking at, at around two inches in one hour. So uh, that is what's moving in from off the sound onto the Connecticut shoreline. It will be continuing to work farther inland to the north uh, as we look in around Guilford, Madison, and Clinton at around one inch an hour. Uh, Killingworth, you see that lighter shade of pink. That's around half an inch in one hour. And then you get up toward around Durham, Moodis. We're talking about like two inches over a three hour period. That's the current rate that the snow is falling. So as we uh, uh, you know, switch back over to the traditional uh, reflectivity mode here. You can see again those very deep shades of blue moving uh, from the shoreline farther inland. So moving through interior portions of Fairfield, New Haven, Middlesex and New London counties at the current time. So uh, but what you see at your window now across southern Connecticut is what you can expect for the next several hours. Meanwhile, farther inland, the snow intensity is only going to be going up as the afternoon progresses. So again, very dark shades of blue. Monroe, Easton, Trumbull up and down Route 8. Also along the Wilbur Cross Parkway, I-91, the entire shoreline, Route 1, I-95, New Haven, east through Branford, Guilford, Madison, Clinton, to where 95 meets up with Route 9 around Old Lyme, all the way to the Rhode Island border, of course, Mystic and Stonington, and then up 395 where it meets up with Route 2, so around Norwich, Basra, uh, Taffville, and then up and around the uh, Hartford metro area. Uh, we're looking at uh, moderate snow at the current time, but again, more snow or the intensity is going to be increasing as we head uh, through the next several hours hours and through the evening commute time or what would typically be the evening commute time. So we do have uh, on uh, our alert here, of course, a winter storm warning up for much of the region, a coastal flood advisory. We have through tonight through tomorrow, we have actually two upcoming high tide cycles that the wind in tandem with the high tide will lead to that concern for some minor uh, flooding along the Connecticut shoreline. So uh, we're monitoring that aspect of the storm too. So as we head through the rest of this, uh, this Monday afternoon into the evening hours, say between now and 8 p.m., uh, snowfall rates one to two inches an hour. We just showed you they're working into southern Connecticut that will create near whiteout conditions, reducing uh, the visibility greatly. And then, of course, the wind is going to move that snow around even more. So wind gusts up to perhaps even over 50 miles an hour. Then tonight, not as bad. And same goes for tomorrow. Uh, we're looking at at least periods of some light snow, wintry mix, maybe even periods of just plain old rain. So minor additional accumulation on tap for tomorrow. But between now and, say, midnight, that's when we're going to see quite a lot of snow, uh, 10 inches common in many communities perhaps upwards of 15 to 18 in some spots. More on that in just a moment. Temperatures across the state, sub-freezing in many communities. The north-northeasterly wind uh, sustained between 15 and 30 miles an hour uh, is going to make it feel much, much colder. So if you're going to perhaps go out and maybe do some snow removal in rounds, uh, dress and plan accordingly because wind chill values are in these uh, single digits in the northwest hills, uh, teens elsewhere inland and along the shoreline. So the storm center, the storm is still intensifying, still getting its act together. It's this counterclockwise clockwise spin here to the east of the Delmarva Peninsula, south of Long Island. It is moving very, very slowly from west to east. So that counterclockwise flow pulling more moisture in from off the Atlantic here across southern New England. So those bands of heavy snow that currently exist throughout southern Connecticut will be lifting farther north as the day moves forward. So on Futurecast showing the blues, plenty of snow, poor visibility coming down at a moderate to heavy clip as we head through this evening. But do notice as we get past uh, say 7, 8, 9 o'clock tonight from south to northwest monitoring that mix line, perhaps even some rain moving into southeast Connecticut. Uh, Futurecast here tries to bring it all the way to the 84 quarter overnight and then throughout the day tomorrow. Again, as we mentioned earlier, at least some scattered areas of light rain and snow for the day tomorrow. Uh, so right now we've seen wind gusts. Uh, in fact, since midnight between 30 and 45 miles an hour. Kent so far one of the greater uh, wind gusts at 44 miles an hour in those temperatures again in the low and mid 20s. So the wind on Futurecast continues to increase as we head through the afternoon into the evening hours. Here's 8 o'clock tonight. Wind gusts perhaps 50 to 55 miles an hour. So there's also that concern for uh, isolated to scattered 
scattered power outages by 7 o'clock tomorrow morning. The wind, while still up, not quite as intense. And then during the day tomorrow, still quite breezy, uh, but the worst of the wind will be behind us. So with regard to snowfall totals, greatest amounts coming in from western Connecticut. Uh, that's where we could see 10 to 15 with locally higher amounts, but uh, elsewhere farther east and even throughout much of New Haven County, 8 to 12 inches. You hit the southeastern Connecticut shoreline. It's where we could see lesser totals with regard to snow, given that uh, possible mixing later on this evening into the early overnight time frame. So again, we're talking about heavy snow, a gusty wind, uh, high likelihood of that. That's certainly already underway. Uh, the travel across the state uh, certainly um, discouraged, uh, given uh, that conditions will continue to deteriorate in power outages and coastal flooding also in the cards for us with uh, with winter storm uh, Cooper. So uh, wind uh, is going to make the wind. I'm sorry, the wind is going to make the snow even worse as it's going to be blowing it around a bit. But uh, regardless, we've got visibility along the shoreline where those bands of heavy snow are working in down to around a quarter of a mile. That's also the case. Chester Meriden also into Waterbury and Danbury around half mile visibility at Brainerd Airport in Hartford. So there's our view from our capital city. 36 stories up. Uh, you can barely make out the Connecticut River there. Our view from uh, Old Saybrook, kind of a beautiful scene looking out across the sound there with the snow coming down uh, from New Haven, a snow covered green and snow covered roads surrounding the green in the Elm City and our view from Waterbury as well showing uh, snow cover on the roads uh, down onto the uh, streets there in the Brass City. So on our seven day forecast uh, tomorrow again, some lingering scattered areas of light rain and snow, nothing like we're going to see today. And then we start to moderate a bit and dry out for a Wednesday into Thursday. Uh, by Friday, we could see temperatures uh, hit or exceed the 40 degree mark, but there's a lot of uncertainty with regard to a storm system, a cold front that could bring some rain to the state Friday to Saturday and then the arrival of some much colder air as we close out the weekend and head into uh, next week. Shoreline highs over the coming days, mid to upper 30s by Wednesday and Thursday. That's the latest from the Early Warning Forecast Center.